Hello, hello. I am Pastor Mark, and me and my lovely wife, Pastor Regina, we pastor Diverse Church, and I want to invite you to Diverse Church. Our service times are on Sunday morning at 10 a.m., 120K Drive in Easley, South Carolina. So this is your personal invitation. I want to talk to you today and to let you know I was so excited about the message today. It's called, entitled, It's a Matter of the Heart. You are the manager. I gave a lot of scripture, but I started off with the scripture in John 14 and 1. Believe, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, also believe in me. So let not your heart be troubled. You are the manager. It's very important what we allow in. So understand this as you dive into the Word of God, this message today. You're going to be blessed with this message today. Thank you. Have a blessed day. My God, my God, you need to take heed to the Word of God. I'm going to make it an executive decision today in here. I want everybody to stay in here. I don't want the children moving out. I don't want them going to the next room. Because the word that I've got today, I want every one of the children, I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying because this applies to you. You're old enough. Get off of your device. Get off of whatever you're looking at. You need to pay attention. I need everybody to pay attention. I'm being pastor today. It is very important with the word that I have today. You are not too old. You're not too young to hear what I've got to say today. Because my heart as pastor and men, Pastor Regina, our hearts have been real heavy. There are things that we are faced with even now and things that we know as pastor. And I feel a weight of it. And... I think next week I may go into a message is I don't care. I've talked, I think, I th who was it? I think I talked with you. I think it might be more time because when I wanted to do that is I'm at the point that I don't care. What am I saying that I don't care? Where I will go in that message is we have got to learn to cast our care upon him. And when you learn that, that is casting the care because I'm not built to carry certain things. God Almighty, that will probably be next week. But for the sake of time, I need you guys to take notes and to listen to me today because I'm giving you the word of the Lord. This is to help you, to make you better as a born-again believer. If you're not saved, this is what you need. You need the word of God in your life so we have been in really this has actually been in almost you could say a series of where we've been we didn't we didn't plan on this man but we've actually been in a series and i think this might conclude it today but on uh 6 30 uh 24 of june i preached a message titled you can go back and look and we in the vein of resting and understanding what that means. It was resting in the faithfulness of God. And then on July the 7th, Pastor Regina came back on the heels of that in the same vein. Are you living the faith rest life? And then last week, she preached on having the confidence to rest in the promises of God. You cannot ride on the coattail of your parents, of your pastors. They're going to pray for you. Your loved ones are going to pray for you. Children, you need to listen to me and understand this. Your parents, grandparents, your loved ones, your pastors, they will pray for you. They believe in you because our children, we declare, that shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of our children. But you've got to learn to declare and speak the word of God for yourself. Because we're living in a day and time that we're going to have to be taught the word of God and understand what comes out of your mouth. If you can th throw lyrics of songs 
and then you can't even give me a scripture when you're faced with something. Something is wrong. And I refuse to be that pastor that is not going to tell you the truth and shame the devil. You may not like what I'm saying, but I'm going to tell you the truth in love. Love won't set you free. The truth will set you free in love. And if I don't tell you the truth, I've got to do it in love. All this stuff we're going around, you got to love people. You got to love people. That's right. But you got to tell people the truth in love. I'm like Paul. If I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth. I'm in a vein today of teaching. And where I'm at today is I'm more uncomfortable when God directs me to want to teach Versus preach. Now, I love to preach. I've, I've told you before, I'm a preacher teacher. Regina is the teacher preacher. But God is doing something and saying, we've got to get the word of God in the people. It's up to you. Every time that I stand up here, the word of God already tells me I've got a 25% chance of you getting the word of God. So we've got to go back to where if it's taking a, a notebook out and taking notes... If you're getting your phone and taking notes, where have we lost our passion? Where have we lost that we're teaching our children to write down, to pay attention, to listen to the word of God? I want some, I want some grandmas, some mamas, and plus when them children ain't doing, reach over and just pinch them real hard if they start dozing off. Y'all don't hear me. Anyway, so let's go into the Word of God. Bear with me, because we got some things that we need to cover even at the end. So our message entitled today, we're in the vein of rest. Go ahead, you can put that up. we got to learn to understand that we've got to start taking personal responsibility for our own action and decisions that we are making and things that are happening in our life. Somebody say, I'm the manager. Quit blaming everybody else. We've all been done wrong. We've all been lied on. We've all lied on other people. We did other people wrong. But we've got to take responsibility for seeds that we are sowing. So let's go into this scripture. I know this scripture. Go ahead and throw it up there. That I know a lot of people has always heard this typically when you go to a funeral. But I want you to understand what this word of God right here is. Just give me time to walk through this. It says, let not your heart. Be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Michael, play a little bit of something for me. I love, you know, if I get wound up, then just go with me. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. You see, the understanding subject in this verse here is you. Turn to your neighbor right now and just go ahead and tell them. We're audience participation preacher right now. I'm saying it's you. It's you. Come on. We're talking about you. I'm talking about me. It's up to us to control our hearts. Listen to me closely. It's God's power that makes that possible. But we have to make a choice to draw God's ability inside of us out. How do we do that? Well, this verse goes on to say, somebody say, believe in God. Believe in God. Are you believing in God? Faith is where we conquer our emotions. In other words, where we master our emotions. Too many people are ruled by their emotions. Jesus made these statements, listen to me, to his disciples the night before his crucifixion. Even in those extreme circumstances, Jesus was telling them to not let their hearts be troubled. Jesus was trying to tell them and giving them insight to understand, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't be ruled by your emotions. I'm going to teach you how to master your emotions. That's amazing, and that reveals the authority we have over our emotions and knowing how to master our emotions. Somebody says, well, what is your emotions? Your emotions uh, lie into your soulish realm, your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect. 
And that's most of where people live ruled by their emotions. The Lord would have been what unjust to command his disciples to do something that they were powerless to do. So therefore we cannot so therefore we can control or master our emotions regardless of how things are going because everything we're going to be hit in life there's a real devil out there that don't like you that he is a thief and he comes to steal kill and destroy but i'm not going to stop there because he came to give us life that we might have it more abundantly so the fact that jesus mentioned that we're we can control our emotions is first of this list of all the things that we should also see this and show it is very significant in our life. He's trying to tell the disciples, and we can learn through this as we understand that we can, what, understand what our emotions are and not be ruled by our emotions. If we let our emotions run away with us, then it's nearly impossible to rein them in. How many has just lost it and understand later you can't even try to collect back and try to get back of all the blankety blank blanks and all this that we did? I've been there. I've done that. I am not here to tell you anything I did because when my son left this place, I, my emotions was everywhere all over the place and I was looking for somebody to say something. And and it, I, I, I know that I had people praying for me because I didn't care whether I lived or whether I died. I was hoping somebody would do something or say something because my emotions were ruling me. So I'm not telling you something that there's nothing to do, but I am here. I know I run my words together. My wife gets my when I do that, I'm not speaking in tongues. Sometimes I'm talking so fast and they run together. I just get excited. So it's easier to hold them at bay than to, than to try to even stop them as they're gone because it's like a snowball effect. Once it's going down that hill, you can't stop it. But it's easier to learn that when somebody does something, somebody pulls out in front of you and you want a blanket, they say, I bless you. You've got to learn what to say. Some of you just said on the way, you stupid, dumb idiot. So harnessing our emotions is the first thing to do in a crisis or in a situation. Most battles are won or lost in the first few moments according to the way we allow our emotions to go. We need to understand that. The older I'm getting, the more that I'm in the Word of God, I'm understanding more and more how to master my emotions. I still don't always get it right, but I'm still thriving and still pushing forward to do the right things because that's why I love the Holy Ghost because when you get off, He will say, okay, you know that's not right. Don't underestimate what you got on the inside of you. I'm going to talk about that. So the understood subject in this sentence... Is you. It's me. You, the Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. You are the ones who has control of your heart or your soulish realm of what you're allowing in and what's going out. You can't blame anybody else for what's coming in you. Now, if you're around people and people are saying something, you got to tell people, uh, or you can, you can exit right out. If somebody's cussing, fussing, doing all that stuff, you can say, uh, I'm, I'm exiting it out. So what are we allowing in? Other people and circumstances cannot control you unless you allow them to divert your attention from the Lord and his word. Somebody say, I'm the manager of me. Well, what are you doing? You need to manage yourself. Quit allowing others to manage you. I don't want to be the boss. You're the boss of yourself. What are you allowing in, whether you like it or not? You've got to understand what I, I am allowing in me or what am I allowing to go out of me. So 
Isaiah 26 and 3 says it like this. The Lord gives perfect peace to those whose faith is firm. John 14 and 27 says it like this. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. So let not your heart be troubled. Neither be afraid. So Jesus had just told his disciples to not let their hearts be troubled. And he told them how to do it. What? Believe. Somebody say, I'm a believer. So what does a believer do? I believe. So faith in God is the victory, listen to me, that overcomes the world and all its troubles. So let me give you the scripture on that because I'm giving you a lot of scripture today. So 1 John 5 and 4 says it like this. For whosoever is born of God. Let me see how many believers do I have in here. How many people of God do I have in here. So listen at this. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to me. It says whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. My good God, you're an overcomer. Somebody say I'm an overcomer. Look at the person beside you and say you're an overcomer. I'm just telling you what the word of God says about you. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. What? Even our faith. I have the victory in everything. It may not look like I've got the victory. I've got the victory. Why? Because my faith, I've overcome the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that's on the inside of you than he that's in the world. I'm trying to get something inside of you, the word of God in you, to let you know how powerful you are. So the disciples believed in Jesus enough to, to totally devastate it when he died, but not yet they didn't believe the prophecies concerning his resurrection. Let me give you a scripture with that. Matthew 16 and 21. In other words, you can't just believe parts of the Bible without believing the whole Bible. Quit picking and choosing what you believe. The Word of God is truth. So from the beginning... On Jesus, uh, from then on, Jesus, listen, began to clearly reveal to his disciples that he was destined to what? Go to Jordan and to suffer injustice from the elders, leading priests, religious scholars. He also, listen, explained that he would be killed. But look at this. In three days, he would rise come again, come alive. He was telling his disciples all along, I've got to go through all of these things so scriptures will be fulfilled. He was trying to get to his disciples to understand this. It's got to happen. He was born to die, but he didn't stay there. Jesus made it very clear in this teaching, look in John 16 and 1, that he was saying these things so that his disciples would not be offended. He was trying to let them understand. In John 16 and 1, it says, I have told you this, that you would what? Would not suffer. Why did he tell this? So you would not suffer confusion and doubt. So, you, so you've got surrender. Let me read that again. I have told you so that you would not what? Surrender. You would not surrender to what? Confusion and doubt. You would not surrender confusion and doubt. That's why you've got to understand. You've got to know what the Word of God says. Children, you've got to read the Word of God for yourself. You don't think you need the Word of God. I'm telling you, you need the Word of God. Because you're going to be faced with things. And you need a word in your mouth to declare. I don't care if you understand. Jesus! Because the Word of God says that he that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Good God Almighty. But his words, listen, didn't profit them because they mixed them, their faith. Listen at what Hebrews 4 and 23. There was a mixture here. Let's go to that in the TPT. So, for we have heard the good news of deliverance, just as they did. Yet what? They did not, what? Join their faith with the word. Instead, what they heard didn't affect them deeply, for they doubted. So if you're in here today and it don't move you and it's not affecting you and you're doubting, we are not to be doubters, we are to be believers. 
listen at this, verse 3. For those of us who believe, do I have any believers in this house today or watching online? For those of us who believe, what does it say? Faith. Come on. Faith activates what? The promise. And we experience the realm of confident rest. Somebody say, I believe and I receive confident rest. I have confident rest. Why? Because I believe. That's why that we continually tell you the word and faith. If there's no word, you don't have no faith. If you don't have word, you don't have faith. It's interchangeable. You got to see. What are you saying, preacher? I don't believe that. Okay, I'm glad you, you think that way because I'm going to help you. So, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So how does your faith come? That's in Romans 10, 17. How does faith come? What does it say? So then faith comes what? By hearing and what? By the word of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So when you open up your mouth and you declare God is right there with you. That's why when you speak the word of God, God is always a very present help in a time of trouble. So when you speak the word, God is there. I've got, I can't emphasize that enough that we got to speak the word of God. So they had enough faith to be what? Dissatisfied with failure, but not enough to have victory. See, it's better to go all the way in with God and believe in God and believe in everything God's word says than half heartedly believe in and having a mixture in there. I choose to believe the word of God. That's why the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3 and 5, having what? A form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. I'm tired of preachers preaching cliches and just catchy rhymes and phrases but don't believe what they're preaching. I know when and every time you can come in, I can come in the house, I can put on my mask and know when to put up my hands. I know the right time when to say hallelujah, but I don't believe in the power of God. I know how to fool people. You can't fool God. That's why you got to say, I don't want a form of godliness. I want the power of Almighty God. So let's go back to John 4 and 1. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. So in other words, we must not what let. What are you letting in your heart? Look at me, children. What are you letting in your heart? What are you letting in? So how can we let things trouble us simply by not guarding our gates listen to me closely children what are your gates your eyes your ears your mouth what are you letting in remember you're the manager I said you're the manager what are you letting in you're the manager. Quit blaming everybody else what they might have said. I'm not letting that in. Somebody said, you're no good. I'm blessed in the highly favor of the Lord. I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and never again beneath. Never let an event define who you are. An event will never define who you are. you got to allow the Word of God to define who you are. That's why when you get the Word of God on the inside of you, all of us have did messed up things we don't know, want people to know about, and even now you're in stuff. But never allow a, an event to define you. The Word of God defines you, and you're a mighty man of God. You're a mighty woman of God. You are a mighty child of God. You are sons. You are daughters of Almighty God. Other ways we can allow things to get into our gate, through our gates, our hearts, our soulish realm, is fear. The Bible says, God have not given us the spirit of fear, but a power and a love and of a sound mind. Somebody say, I'm the manager. I'm guarding what gets in. You've got to guard your gates. 
So what, what you see, in other words, what you are watching, 1 uh, Corinthians 16 and 13 says, watch. Somebody say, watch. I think I got the scripture, DJ. Put that one up there, I think. 1 Corinthians 16 and 13. Somebody say, watch. And what? Stand fast in the faith and be brave and be strong. What are you listening to? Mark 4 and 24 says it like this. Listen at this. This is very interesting. In the Amplified Version, it says, And he said to them, Be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be measured of a virtue of knowledge that comes back to you and more besides will be given to you who hear. In other words, words are seeds. Quit allowing people to put the bad seeds in you. Because if you allow them to go in, they will come up. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Company you keep. Listen to me, children. Listen to me, people of God. The company you keep. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 says it like this. So stop fooling yourself. Evil companions will corrupt good morals and character. Somebody say, I, I, I've got a guard. I've got a guard. I've got a guard because I'm the manager. Look at the person beside you. You're the manager. If you're sleeping in church, you're allowing things to get in when you understand I need to get the Word of God in me so I understand how to fight the enemy. We must remember that we are spirit, we are soul, and we are body. Romans 12 and 2 declares this. We give you this all the time. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a what? New person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you which is good and pleasing and perfect. In other words, that's why we say you got to study the Word of God. You've got to allow what, what I'm getting in. You are renewing your mind with something every day. If you're on your vice right now and say, I don't want to listen to that white preacher up there right now. I just wish that he'd hurry up because I'm getting kind of hungry right now. I'm trying to help you to understand if you're not renewing your mind with the Word of God, I'm telling you, you got to be able to be able to fight. With the word of God and declare the word of God will accomplish and go forth. It will not return void. The angels of God hearken into the voice of the word of God. So let's look at Proverbs 4 and 23. What does it say? It says, guard what? Your heart above all else. Look at this. For it determines the course of your life. Somebody say, I'm the manager. What am I allowing in? Oh, I don't feel like studying. That's the preacher's job to study. No, you're the manager. Somebody say, you're the manager. No, now say it to you. I'm the manager. I deserve a wage increase. I deserve a promotion. Because promotion comes neither from the east nor the west nor the south. But God is the judge. He puts down one and sets up another. I'm on a medal. This is a side rabbit trail just a minute. When they was talking about that glory, the first the songs they were singing, I'm going to mess with you and then I'm going to move on. The first time the word glory was ever mentioned in the, New, I mean, the Old Testament, I think, it's 30, uh, I think it might be, help me hold the ghost, uh, Genesis 31 and 1, the first time it ever talked about glory, it's talking about wealth. Y'all don't hear me. That's for another day, another time. Because when I hear glory, see, there's much more vast glory than just wealth. But that the first time it was mentioned, it lets me know that I'm to be wealthy. Why? Because my daddy is rich. Y'all don't hear me. I've, all, I've been broke, and I didn't like it. And I'll never be broke another day in my life. I got too much seed in the ground. Woo, good God Almighty. So if you are born again... Listen to me. 
you have the same Jesus. I'm born again is the same Jesus that I have. I don't have more Jesus than you have more Jesus because when you get born again, you are a spirit, soul, and body. Jesus comes into your spirit. That's the real you. You've got all the Jesus that you will ever get. Herein lies the difference that some have understood that how do I understand this Jesus, understand who I am. Behold, all things have passed away. All things have become new. What? Renewing my mind with the word of God. Some of us have started learning and understand that I've got to tap into who I am in Christ. I said in Christ. So if you don't take the time to study and understand that who I am in Christ, that can be a difference. In other words, we understand or some understand the power of Almighty God. Okay, let me give it a little bit more of, break it down just a little bit more. Okay, just say a car. Let me give an example to help us a little bit better with this. Break it down. Say, I got a car, Terry's got a car, we got the same car, make, model, same year of car, same everything, identical cars. It could be the same color, it could be interior, outside, everything the same of everything. And maybe Terry took the time to say, you know what, I'm going to read the instruction manual, I'm going to get the book, and I'm going to start seeing what is equipped with this car. So he took time to equip the car and I just got in the car and just wanting to start driving. But then Terry understood and realized that, see, we can be at the red light together. He's looking at me. I'm looking at him. He's looking at him. We're looking back and forth. I said, I think he's wanting to race. I think he might be trying to see the same car, same make, model, same everything. And then we're going to say, and then all of a sudden, he pushes his and he's gone. And I'm still why wow, I'm an econ. He understood that there was a sport on that thing. He went past comfort. He hit sport and took off. Why? What I'm trying to say is he got into the book. Y'all don't hear me. There's 1189 chapters, 66 books of seed. He took the time to get in the book and I didn't. What I'm trying to tell you, you got to get into the word of God and understand for myself, I want to know what God is saying to me. I wish I had a church that believed the word of God. Good God Almighty. The Holy Spirit is constantly downloading into us information. He is constantly downloading. But if we're not renewing our mind according to the word of God, listen to me. It's like a dam blocking the flow. We've got to understand to quit letting the dam block the flow. Oh, the preacher cuss. What well, you say? What you want? I don't care. I'm delivered from all that. Quit allowing a dam to block the flow. You've got to get into the word yourself. I applaud you today because you have put a priority on the word. You are here getting the word of God today. So what does Matthew 8, 11, and 12 say? For the kingdom of God suffered violent, and the violent take it by force. What does that mean? We, we quote that. We say that. What is the violent? What is the force? What am I taking my force? I'm taking my force, my faith. I, what I'm taking my force, I'm believing what I have, the victory. That's my force. I believe in the word of God. I'm acting on the word of God. I'm confessing the word of God. I'm preaching the word of God. Why? That's the force. That's what the kingdom of God is taking force. We take, the, take it by force. Violently what? I'm not giving no place to the devil. Don't give place to the devil. The devil is defeated. Let God arise and your enemies be scattered. I'm closer to my landing than from when I started. I promise you. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. I'm going to have to read this slowly because I'm used to quoting this in King James. But this is in the NLT. All scripture is inspired by God. Listen to me. It is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize 
what is wrong in our lives. I don't have to keep getting up here preaching sin, sin, sin. You know if you're in sin, you know it. I'm going to tell you who you are in Christ. Because if we're doing anything we shouldn't be, if I keep telling you who you are, you're going to quit doing all them other things. God Almighty. What does it do? It corrects us when we are wrong. And it teaches us to do what is right. Verse 17, God uses it to what? Prepare and equip His people to do every good work. So if you've got the Word of God, reading the Word of God, get the Word of God into it, I'm being equipped. I'm understanding of who I am, that I understand about the armor of God. I understand that I'm not a little weak somebody. I'm a mighty man of God, that I can declare the Word of God and speak a thing and His Word won't return void. I got angels encamped around me. So, I will give you just 12 things that I want you to understand that is on the inside of you. This might be some way that we can teach this, but Frank, listen to this. The Word of God says in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10, I won't read all of this, but I want you to see. I want to, we can't just, we got to study the Word of God. Our responsibility is help teach the Word of God. These verses here, I don't have this one up here, but the first verse in 1 Corinthians 12 and 1, it says this. If you read, get, get your Bible. It says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. That word gifts is not in the original translation. Anytime you see an italicized word in the New Testament, it's not in the original manuscripts. It was added by the translator. They were trying to give you or help you to understand a little bit more, but sometimes it, it doesn't help. So that actually says, now concerning spiritual brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. Ignorant is unlearned. So these 12 things that I'm talking about here, that you see up here, as you, if you go back and you read from 7 to 10, it says all of these are the manifestations of the Spirit are flowing out of your heart. You're born again. You have every one of these on the inside of you right here. Look at me. Look what I'm trying to tell you to understand. These are on the inside of you. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, diver kind of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. So you say, well, why are there some like Benny Hinn that can have, I don't flow in in a healing and anointing and all that. The difference is he's allowed the Holy Ghost to manifest and to flow through him. So what are you allowing to flow through you? You are not here without an excuse. You, look what's on the inside of you. These are the manifestations of the Spirit. If you're born again, you have every one of these on the inside of you. Are you allowing Him to manifest through you? If I'm ministering to someone or something, that's why I've got to allow myself to allow a word of wisdom to flow through, a word of knowledge. These are inside of you. These are the forces of life. This is what a force of life is. These are inside of you if you're born again. The Holy Spirit came into you and is wanting to manifest through you. These are on the inside of you. Not just for me as a preacher and my wife as preacher. They're on the inside of you. They're inside of you, Michael. They're inside of you, Shannon. They're inside of you. Terry, they're inside of you. Allow the manifestations to flow. We've been taught incorrectly. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do His good pleasure. Don't underestimate 
the power of Almighty God that's on the inside of you. When you are faced with the trials and tribulations you are of this world and things, what is going to be my response? When they came and knocked on the door of the corner and came and told us and it was pronounced our son was dead, what was my first response? I cried out to God. I was yelling, no. I was screaming. My first response, though, was God. That's where I'm trying to get our first response a lot of times instead of being a word of God or being God is something else. Our first response should be Almighty God. Come on, give Jesus a hand praise. My assignment today was to help you to understand that you are the manager. What am I allowing in? Quit blaming everybody else. I have to quit blaming everybody else. And I say, God, I take personal responsibility. I got one more statement I'm going to read or a little something. What you tolerate, you're authorized to exist. Either accept the present without complaint or make a decision to use your faith and attract a miracle from God because there are some of us that need a miracle from God. Your back may be up against the wall. I can't go any further or anything if nobody else can do anything, but I believe in miracles today. I believe in signs and wonders. Why? Because the Word of God says that they shall follow the believers. I'm not chasing after a, a miracle, but I know that they will follow me as a believer. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I understand that no matter where I'm at, He is always with me. Come on, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Come on, clap your hands. Give Jesus a hand praise. We love you here at Diverse Church. God bless you. You have a Jesus-filled day, week, year. Finish strong and prosperous.